Hi everybody, this is PDA Master Dennis Monacrucis, and today we're going to take a look at, uh, or we're going to take a look for a second week here, at games submitted by fellow Chess Videos viewers. Um, so last time we looked at five different games, I think, and uh, there was a, a, another game that I wanted to look at. We'll get to that, I hope, at the end of this one. So it's a really neat game, and um, again, hopefully we'll be able to get to it in, in this show. So we'll either look at two or three uh, different games in this presentation. So the first one is between Benjamin Lim and Richard Taylor, submitted by Taylor, who lost this game, though he started off with a terrific position. So skip over all of the uh, middle game stuff and proceed more or less straight to this end game here. And actually, since Taylor had black, I guess we can flip this around. Um, all right, so what's going on here? Well, black is very much in the driver's seat at this point, and his first move is correct. He plays bishop takes a4, white played knight takes a5, and let's discuss this a little bit. White, as you may notice, has no less than five isolated pawns here, and uh, since black's pawns are all clean, this certainly should give black a very big advantage. Now, there are opposite colored bishops, but white's bishop is not quite as good as black's, as you can pretty, pretty easily tell. I mean, black's is beautifully centralized, uh, it's um, attacking one of the weak pawns here on the board and um, can possibly go after the h-pawn as well in some variations, while white's bishop is just, at least for the moment, unimaginably bad. So clearly this position is uh, altogether in, in black's favor. Now, the question is, well, what should he do? All right, well, to win the game, we're going to have to win some pawns. And to do that, we want to, of course, I think, go for the ones on the king side. They're much more easily accessed. So we don't want to take the pawn on f5 right away. Well, actually, it's not even clear that we don't, because if we take this pawn right away, we are giving white this b pawn, but at least we get a twofer. Now, it's true, though, that white has this a pawn, and it's passed. But black's bishop can, can pretty easily handle it on the long diagonal. So bishop to g2, and, and we're covering the diagonal. So that's uh, at least a possible way to go. But certainly there's no real reason why we should volunteer to give away this pawn. And with that in mind, black played knight to d6. But I think an even better move uh, would have been f6. Oops, I already got it. Yeah, there we go. By playing this, we're fixing this guy as a, as a weakness here. So it's, it's just sitting there, it's dead, it's not going away. And um, that, I think, would have been the easiest way to handle the position. So it does two things. First of all, it uh, fixes the pawn on f5 where it's stuck. And secondly, it's going to make it easier for, for the black king to come into the game, by whichever means, after the, the f pawn goes. So this, I think, w is a big improvement over the game. So that was knight to d6. And white made a good move here. He played f6. So this pawn is, of course, going to, to leave. But no matter what black does in response, um, it's at least slightly awkward. If he plays g6, which was Taylor's recommendation, but I think not the right move, um, then still white, you know, black will win the f pawn eventually. But you know, it's not really. It's going to take some time, and that that pawn could be a bit of a bone in the throat. I mean. How are we going to round it up? We play knight, C8, uh, knight to e8, white plays c4, so that's not much fun. And, um, you know, if we try to do it with the king, that's going to take quite a few moves as well. So, you know, we, we can win it, but it, it'll take some time. And maybe we have that, that amount of time, but I think um, what, what black played was, was just fine. So he played b6. Don't know if he needed to do that, but it's okay. Knight to b3, and now g takes f6. Yeah, so here he recommended g6. So I think that's... Uh, just a, a little inaccurate. It's, it's needlessly slow. And uh, as long as black just brings his king up, there, there's no problem at all here. Okay, so white played knight to d4, and here black played knight c4. And this isn't bad, but, um, you know, I would say just get on with it. So king g7, this king's ready to rumble. Or even another move that, that black could play is c5, knight to b3, bishop to f5, uh, attacking the h-pawn and encouraging it to come closer, and then after h4, play king g7. A and I think that white is just completely lost and will probably resign within 5-10 moves in, in this position. All right, however, okay, after knight to d4, black played knight c4. And again, this isn't bad. 
knight to b3. But here, uh, black did make a, a very poor move. He played h5, and this, this is, I think, mistaken for a couple of reasons. One is that white plays h4, and again, it becomes a little bit more difficult for, for black to get these white pawns. Uh, we'll see the second reason shortly. So again, the, the right thing to do is just simply king g7. So bring the king up, king goes to, to f5, or comes over to the h-pawn, and this should, should win quite easily. In fact, uh, once you do that, there's really not too much that, that white can do. I mean, the problem for, for white, well, a couple of problems. One is that uh, a knight is an absolutely terrible piece when it comes to defending against rook-pawns, so h-pawns or a-pawns. So it has a, a really terrible time with that because it can only defend it from one side, and it's a short-moving piece. So it has to be on, let's say, f2 or g3 to deal with an h-pawn. And, um, you know, it's not, it gives, gives uh, the defender much less uh, margin for, for, um, for error. So, you know, it's even possible that white could just take the bishop, or sorry, that black could just take the bishop, bring the king up, and win. So, unfortunately, he played h5, and then only after h4, took on b2. And now, this is just bad. This, this gives white uh, a draw. Though there are, there are some interesting tricks that, that still remain to be seen. Okay, I mentioned here after h5 that, that white had another good move here, or at least another interesting try, and he does, and it's, it's the move knight to d2, just aiming for opposite colored bishops. A and here I would suggest um, trying to figure out what best play is. So th this isn't too tough, I think, but, but try to figure out what black should do about this. Okay, well, black can either retreat the bishop or exchange, or play knight to d6. And uh, we'll just look at two, two ideas, though. So knight takes d2, and, and this is a draw. Even though we're winning the h-pawn with h4, fixing it in place, Black's, or, sorry, white's counterplay is too fast. So he plays, should play c4, threatening to take on f6, and then on h4, so king g7. Now king e3, bishop g2. And again, we've got to go for counterplay, so bishop c3, aiming to bounce off the back wall here and take the pawn. So king g6, bishop b1, king h5, bishop c3. And, you know, we can go back and forth, but um, it, it's not going to win then. So bishop takes h3, bishop f6, bishop f1, king f2. And we have one of these mutual pawn massacre situations. So both sides grab a bunch of pawns. But at the end of the day, this is just a, a straightforward draw. White puts his king on h2, where it can't be dislodged, and the bishop is simply going to defend whichever pawn it needs to. So as long as black's king is attacking this pawn, the bishop takes care of it. And as the king runs over to this one, well, we just play bishop to d6, and then leave the bishop on the f8, a3 diagonal. So as long as it's, it's on this diagonal, the pawn is safe. And there's really nothing that black can do to overload white. So this is just a, a simple draw. All right, so going back to the position after knight to d2, the right thing to do is to play knight takes b2. Now, if king takes b2, then we get that, um, that situation that I mentioned before, though with white getting an h4, it's uh, maybe not quite so clear. So actually, I'm not even sure that this is a win. But um, if knight takes e4, then black can win. So knight to d3, well, he can, he can at least be better, whether it's a win or not is not entirely clear. And uh, the best is actually king f8 now. And with this extra pawn, black has pretty good winning chances. Whether it's a win or not, I'm, I'm not sure. And uh, it would take some, take some work to, to determine, but certainly has very good winning chances here. Okay, well in the game, instead of knight to d2, white played h4. And here black should just drop the bishop back. And then play something like c5. Just basically improve the position, and now with knight to e3, the game is going to be over in short order with knight g2, knight takes h4, the pawn falls, and, and black, uh, sorry, white won't have anything approaching sufficient compensation. I mean, if he tries c4, hitting this pawn, of course, we just play king to g7, keep everything secure, and in fact, the king may even come up and do its own damage. So black is just winning. All right. So knight takes b2 is played in the game. This is just a blunder. 
And after king takes b2, uh, the position is equal. Though black can, can still try. See, the key thing here is that once white gets his knight to e3, black no longer has any way to penetrate into the position. So uh, the, uh, the white kingside pawns are completely safe. And there's not really very much for white, or sorry, for black to achieve over on the queen side either. So that's, the position is more or less balanced over there. I mean, white's got split pawns, but given the, uh, the, the nature of the material on the board, that really doesn't matter. So if white's knight can get to e3, the position is a draw. So with that in mind, black should try something like king to g7, knight to d2, and bishop to d3, not allowing the white knight to, to get to e3. So you can see the knight to get here would have to get there from, you can see the squares. And it can't get to any of these um, by the time black plays king to f5. So, um, how, well, okay, also d5 and, and f5. So, um, try to figure out what it is that white's move should do here so he doesn't just lose to king g6, king f5, and the, uh, the king penetrating. Okay, well, I'm going to assume you stopped the recording, you figured it out, and now I'll show you the answer. So, c4, king g6, king c3. Now, of course, what black can play king to f5, but I, I don't think it's uh, it's good enough. He's probably going to end up being worse there. So, let's say bishop to e2, but now knight e4. And the point is that if, if king to f5, knight to g3 check, we win the bishop. And the funny thing is, after knight to e4, or let's even go back to here, after king c3, there doesn't seem to be any place for the bishop to go uh, where it can keep the, the knight off of either, let's say, g3 or e3. So it has to allow one or the other, or just be sacrificed. And the problem is, of course, it doesn't even have very many squares. I mean, it can go to f5, but then it takes that square away from the king, or it goes to e2. So knight e4, and, uh, and that's, that's it. So, for example, it's bishop to g4, now knight to g3, and, you know, it's a draw. Now the one try that black still has is to maybe bring his king all the way around, well, to, to a4, and then try to win by using Zugzwang. But, as we'll see, that, that plan uh, can be thwarted. So, for example, if f5, king b4, and with white's king over there first, actually, white has to be slightly careful, because if he plays king to b5, we let the black king around the corner, the bishop can take care of the a pawn, and black is winning. So, uh, after c, f whoops, after f5, sorry, all this jumping around, white should play king to c4. So, not letting the black king in, and this is a draw. Alright, so going back to here, okay, if c5, to keep the white king from going on that little fishing trip, king d2, f5, okay, so again, now we're going to bring the king over and around and try to bring him up and then again hopefully utilize Zugzwang to win. Well, a4, king f6, white just waits and now plays knight to e3, slightly improving his position and now knight to d5. Okay, so let's see here, king a3 and okay, can do all the little maneuvering he wants to but the bottom line is when he wants to play king a5, he just gets driven back with knight to c6 check. And if black tries to stop it with knight to e4, then he has other problems that he has to worry about. And there doesn't seem to be any way to really make this work. So, you know, if king to a5 here, just king to b3. And, okay, if white wants to, uh, oh sorry, if black wants to play bishop to f3, to play bishop to d1, oops, then there's knight takes f5, or even again, just king to a3, and again, when bishop to d1 happens, not only can black, uh, or does black have to worry about knight c6 check, getting pushed back, but also knight takes f5, and this could be kind of unclear as well. So, um, <coughs> white's able to hold the position, even after king g7. And in the game, we saw c5, knight to d2, bishop c6, uh, White could try knight to c4 here, but plays c4, king f8, and there's our fundamental drawing position. Now, um, in fact, in some ways, White is better. Now, the position is, is just a draw, but he's better because 
Um, there's nothing, there's no conceivable way that black can win any longer against passive play by white. Okay, so white just plays king b3, king c3, and, and just does nothing. He, he can't lose. But there are ways that black can lose this. And in fact, black uh, does in fact go on to lose this game. He shouldn't, but the point is, you know, when you've got these st completely static positions where one side has a knight, the other side has the bishop, that always favors the knight. Okay, so king e6 would have been safer, but interestingly, uh, Taylor thinks that king c6 was a blunder that um, blows the draw. Uh, in fact, though, this is not only not losing the game, but there's a neat trap behind it. Okay, so knight h6 was played by by um, by white, and now uh, Taylor doesn't comment on b5, but this is really a, a very well, it's a dangerous move. So I don't know if it's quite a question mark move, but it's at least dubious. Because after CB, King, B5, now we're giving White another trump here. So he's got this outside pass pawn. And again, it's not enough to win yet, but it's again giving Black no real uh, advantages necessarily, but uh, does give White a little something to play with. Maybe. Though actually, as we'll see, even that's not completely clear. But but the interesting thing here is that instead of b5, black should play king to d7 and do it with uh, a face you know that, that suggests, oh, how, how could I have screwed up like this? <laughs> because after knight takes f7, king e7, knight h6, or knight h8, doesn't matter, bishop to e4, the game is indeed over, but it's white who has to resign because his knight's trapped. And black just finishes with king f8 and king g7, and thanks White for the game. So uh, another try for White is f5, but again king king to e7, very nice move. Knight g8. Now the king goes back to d6, and the uh, the, the black king comes into the king side and, and should win. So king d2, king e5, knight e7, king f4, and White is in big big trouble at this point. Black is um, I don't know if he's winning yet, but uh, certainly the chances are all on are, are all on his side. So after King D7, White should recognize that um, he's wandering in dangerous territory, and play Knight F5 and just resume the uh, the blockade, put the Knight back on E3. Okay, so B5, CB, King B5, Knight G8, and um, and here it's time to retreat. So King C6, Knight F6. King d6. So again, trying to take advantage of White's knight maneuver to uh, remind remind White that hey, this this can be dangerous for you too. The king's ready to come in and penetrate. So White can still hold the game, but again, now it's him who has to be careful. So c4 check takes King e6, and White has to uh, to play accurately here. So Knight h7, threatening the fork, and not just a fork of the king and the bishop but also the bishop and the pawn. So king f5, knight g5, and wins the f pawn. So probably bishop to d1 is best, knight g5. And actually it looks as if uh, black should just jettison the pawn anyway. So king f5 takes king f4. And it's a draw, but white's the one who has to show a little bit of care here. OK, so f5. Now this is uh, another mistake, because now there's no, no route for the uh, black king to penetrate White's king side. So it's like the same mistake as h5 earlier. All right, so knight h6 happened, king c6, knight f7. Knight f5 was actually interesting um, because white might be able to, to penetrate through the f5 point. Okay, but anyway, knight f7, king d5, knight g5. Okay, so a little tacking back and forth here. And white's still trying to win here. And okay. Here, a very interesting moment. So I think, if I remember right, Taylor was unhappy about c4, so he felt that this was another blunder. But but again, he was mistaken. This is actually a very interesting move and, and not a blunder. It's it's a dangerous move. So it's dangerous because, again, we're putting another pawn on a white square, and we're putting this pawn in contact with white's king. So tactical features aside, c4 is a mistake because it's bringing the pawn right next to, to, to the white king. It makes another easy target. But the reason why this is actually um, 
potentially a positive move is because if we look at the position right now, let's say it's white's move, he's in fact in Zug's way. Because if he moves the knight, then black's king comes into e4. If he moves the pawn, then it gets taken. And if he moves his king, then black's king gets the d4 square. So uh, this is actually a position where black should just make a pass move. So something like bishop to c6. And suddenly, you know, it's uh, it's not, not entirely clear anymore if this is um, okay for white. Now, in, in fact, I think he's drawing. Um, but, you know, there might be another move besides bishop c6 that can be examined as well. So maybe there's some finesses. But in any case, white is in, in a bit of trouble. So I, I think he draws, but only just barely. Knight h1, knight g3, knight h5, and... Um, it looks like he, he's drawing here. But, you know, knight to g8, I mean, it's not a move that you want to play. I mean, practically speaking, you know, playing a move like that feels like suicide, but it's good enough. So, bishop to b5, and you can just jettison. We get to the table base ending here, and uh, this is a draw. So, for example, if king g4, the knight to g6 draws, because we're attacking the pawn, and after f3, knight to e5 check, followed by knight takes f3. And if something like bishop to c2, then knight c6. So if knight to e5 is permitted, then the position's a, a dead draw. And um, f3, king e3, and the king goes to f2. And of course that holds. So white is just drawing, but that's you know the, the fun point is he's just drawing. So by allowing the white king to get to d5 with you know these knight maneuvers, you know, white could have gotten himself into some trouble too. So it's only here, with king c5, that black is getting himself in danger. And, and even here, he's still not lost. So knight to d1. With king to d5, again threatening to break through, on the king's side he holds. But, okay, bishop to b5 happened. And now, finally, white's winning with knight to e3. We've got a double attack on the pawns on c4 and f5. And uh, black can neither hold the p both pawns nor uh, get his king over to the uh, king's side to gain counterplay. So the game ended pretty quickly from here. So the outside pass pawn doing its work. So we mentioned last week that the, the outside pass pawn is typically best used as a distraction, not as a pawn that you're trying to promote. And exactly what happened here. I mean, Black's king is off to the side of the board, and white's going to devour the king's side and win. So that's the end of the game there. So a tough loss for, for uh, Taylor, but you know, this is, um, th this kind of thing can happen, so this, this good knight versus bad bishop situation can arise, and of course black's mistakes black made a lot of mistakes in this ending um, but in one sense we could say that one of the basic mistakes was, again, putting all these pawns on, on, uh, on light squares, where they're vulnerable and they block the bishop. A second problem uh, a second, let's say, lesson that we can learn from this is uh, activating the king, right? So he took way too long to activate the king, and on a few other occasions missed opportunities to, uh, to, to use the king for active counterplay. So we should always bear that in mind as well. And um, also knight takes b2. So even leaving aside the, the blockade issue, right, there's just no reason to trade this great knight on c4 for this bad bishop on b2, unless, you know, you're sure that you just have a very easy win by doing so. Um, you know, and then simplifying is fine if it's simp if it's making your task easier. But if there's still plenty of work to be done, then again, keep the active pieces on the board. Okay, well let's move on to the next game. Oops, let me save this first. Okay, so, um, hmm, I don't think this is, yay, uh, I don't think this is the game I'd wanted to look at just yet. There we go. Okay, so this is, um, yeah, this was a, a fun game won by Black in good style. This is uh, Phil Collier against Mike Curtis, submitted by Curtis, and did a great job. So he outplayed his master opponent, even though he was rated 400 points uh, below him. So a very nice job. And a very interesting game, and I think it shows a good template for how the lower rated player ought to try to beat the higher rated player. So he plays this, uh, this, this fun and dangerous Lowenthal line. Okay. So here, white played queen to d1, which is the main line. And so let me let me say that what I would recommend for white is to play simply queen takes f6. 
And the reason why I would say to, to play this is that it's very simple to play, and yet it scores just about as well as the, uh, the queen of d1 lines, and it avoids just about all of the tricky stuff. So white gets a good position and does it without um, all, of the, uh, all of the dangers. Now, if you want to spend your time and, and, and master how to play this with white, okay, you know, go ahead and do it. But, you know, even then, I mean, Kramnik got butchered by uh, Vallejo a few years ago, I think probably in 2005, maybe 2006, playing the white side of this. So, you know, it's the kind of line where, unless you're really sure you know what you're doing, and you're sure you're going to see it, just place it like queen takes f6. I mean, it's, as I said, it, it, it scores just about as well in the, in the databases as queen of d1 does, and, and that's very positively for white, but does so without um, really most of the dangers. So after queen f6, knight f6, knight c3, black has to be very fast, otherwise he just has a, a ton of problems. I mean, you know, he's got the, the weakness on d5, d6 is, um, it's not going to be occupied, but it's a hole. And if, you know, white gets to make just uh, one more move, basically, bishop to g5, and, um, you know, then follows with, up with castling. He's got a strategically won game. He's got the bishop here. Everything is, is just perfect for him. So black has to operate quickly. Knight to b4, bishop d3, d5, takes, takes, takes. Uh, we don't mind if black takes on d5, because then we keep our bishop here. So this, 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 something like this is, is just going to be uh, very good for white. So knight d3, cd, bishop f5, castles, castles, bishop g5, takes, rook f to d1. I know it's kind of zipping through there a little bit, but um, basically we get to this position. Black has regained his pawn. White doesn't have the bishop pair any longer. Um, but still, white has a, an advantage here. White's still slightly better in this position. Uh, his pieces are a little bit more active, a little bit more stable. Follow up with rook a to c1. This pass pawn on d5 is, uh, for the moment, at least more of a strength than a weakness. It's not going to queen, but it's just um, a very nicely centralized unit that prevents black from really achieving very good coordination. So it's, it's hard to see what active um, ideas he can have, for the moment at least, thanks to this pawn helping to cramp him. So white's a little bit better. I mean, it's playable, but, um, you know, it's a safe, nice position for white. Okay, so queen d1 was what was played, and this is uh, the main line. Queen g6, knight c3, knight g to e7. Um, d5 is also a very crazy line, so you guys should all know about this, but um, I'm not going to bother with the theory of it, so I'll just show couple moves here. Queen, knight takes d5, queen e4, bishop to e3, knight d4, knight c7, king e7. Uh, now rook c1 and queen d3 are both playable. Knight takes is not very good. So this, and now bishop to g4, queen d3, takes, bishop takes, rook to d8. Okay, and this is one of the more stable variations. But you can see, I mean, there's a lot of just crazy stuff going on. And, uh, you know, playing lines like this, again, I think it's just more trouble than it's worth for, for white. So, all right. Knight, to, knight gd7 is another important line, a little bit more sedate, and probably sounder. Okay. Uh, Collier played h4. Now, the main move here is h5. But Curtis went for super sharp stuff, and it paid off. You know, all, all credit to him. So he played d5, and white reacted correctly here with h5. Queen d6, e takes d5, knight to d4. Okay, now this position has occurred before, and a couple of games in the database um, see white winning. So one game was between Gert Ligterink and Giacomazzi, played in 1977, and that game continued with bishop to e3. And uh, another game between Kamran Shirazi and a player named Delgado in Skopje in 1972. I guess Shirazi must have been very young back then. So uh, anyway, Shirazi played bishop to c4 and went on to win that game. All right. I uh, don't know that they're necessarily winning in this position, but anyway, it worked out well. Uh, Collier made a, a move that looks pretty logical, too. He played h6, and it would seem that black should just react to this somehow, play g6 or whatever, and then white can get on with the moves that we just looked at, bishop to e3 or bishop c4. But Curtis plays this game just incredibly actively and uh, 
just does a great job. So bishop to f5, just ignore the pawn, hg, rook g8. Okay, so here uh, clearly white has to do something about the threat to c2, so he plays bishop to d3, and black just plays rook takes g7. So he's uh, managed to activate his rook as well, and it's uh, not exactly clear what the, uh, the white king has in mind for his future. So he plays bishop takes f5, trying to swap off some pieces, knight e takes f5, and now g4. All right, so this looks reasonable. He's kicking the knight away, he protects the g pawn. Maybe next he'll play bishop to e3 or knight to e4 with a reasonable position. Well, so what do you do here for black? Where, where should we retreat the knight? So take a minute, try to figure out what black's move ought to do. Well, I don't know if it's what he ought to do or not, but what he played was the terrific queen of g6. And, um, you know, I, I'm not sure what Collier was, was thinking or feeling at this time, but he, but he couldn't have been happy to see, see moves like this over and over again. Okay, well, again, let me suggest that you stop the recording and figure out what White's move ought to do. I mean, is, is this just a, a bluff? Or, you know, is this sacrifice completely sound? You know, what should, what should White do here? So it's a good, good practical question here. What, what should we play in this position? Okay, well, what white played it was knight to e4. So he, he took his opponent at his word, and yeah, this is a reasonable move. So he, of course, black can't take the pawn because of uh, knight f6. Certainly, I hope you, you all saw that. Um, and again, as I said, he'd like to play c3, maybe bishop to e3, and get his king the heck out of dodge as fast as possible. Uh, also, white has a, a pretty nasty threat here. If the knight were to leave, then rook to h6. So if this guy if this guy runs, then rook to h6 is happening. So it's a, it's a clever idea. We'll see what happens with this shortly, but it looks like white probably could have taken. Now this probably would have been just fine. So if queen takes f5, hitting the pawn on c2, that's okay. We're up material. We can afford to give some back. So bishop to e3. Knight c2, king d2, takes, and uh, now maybe flick in rook to h5 first. Queen f6, keeping the e5 pawn protected, and queen takes a1. And, and white should be winning here. The material, um, you know, the material is about equal, but this is a position where the minor pieces are definitely better than the rook. And you can see that white's pieces are all very active, except for the queen, but that's just one move away from being active too. So queen h1. Um, or queen to b1 would put it right in the heart of the action pretty quickly. So this would be winning. Another try for black after g takes f5 is queen to g2. And it, this is dangerous, but I think white's okay as well. After rook f1, um, if black tries knight f3 right away and give checks, it looks like king to d3 is satisfactory. I mean, there's not really any way for black to get at the white king. So he'll play bishop to e3 and um, and then retreat the king back. So a very interesting move for black now is rook to g3. And the point is that if um, f takes g3, black plays knight takes c2 and wins the queen. And if he doesn't, well, then knight to f3 followed by knight to d4, and the king can't go to d3 because the rook's covering it. So once again, maybe take a minute, see if you can figure out what white to move ought to play. Well, the answer is that he should, in fact, take the rook. So f takes g3, knight c2, queen c2, queen c2, bishop d2. And with the rook in two pieces for the queen, white is doing terrifically in material, and his pieces are actually reasonably well coordinated at this point. So he'll follow up with rook to c1 gives up the b2 pawn, but that's really not such a big deal. And, um, and then maybe knight to e4, and you can see all his pieces really come streaming into the game pretty quickly and efficiently. So white's, white's better here. Okay, well in the game, white played knight to e4, and as we mentioned, it is a logical move. So black continued his very active play by castling long. And now he can't play queen takes g4 next move, because there's, there's no longer any fork on f6. All right, well, here it looks like white had to play f3. And um, 
And now after f3, black has uh, another fantastic move, h5, just ignoring everything. Okay, well, so what's the point of this? Well, g takes h5, it's just bad, you let the queen in with queen of g2. If g takes f5, again, queen g2, rook f1, knight c2, and this time, um, black is just far too active. This is going to be great for black, and, and he's winning here. If white tries rook takes h5, no problem. We just trade. We play this check. And then after king to d2, a nasty little finesse, knight to b3 check. And the point is that after a takes b3, rook takes d5, and black ends up the exchange ahead. Uh, actually, more than that, because he's going to win the bishop on, on c1 as well with rook um, d takes d1. So this is winning for black. So after h5, the only move for white is c3, getting rid of this uh, terrorizing knight. h takes g4, c takes d4, knight d4, just replace the one with the other, queen d3, knight f3, and the, cha the chances seem to be balanced here. White's up a piece for two pawns. Um, but of course, black has some attacking chances. But the thing is, white might be able to get some attacking chances too. Now he's pretty close to being developed. Um, you know, he moves his king over, but he can follow up with things like bishop to e3. Maybe the rook comes to c1. The other rook comes to h6. There might be some sack on a6. And you can see that white is uh, getting dangerously developed and mobilized as well. So this is a bad equal. Both sides have their chances here. Okay, well in the game, instead of uh, f3, which leads to those crazy complications, white chose the logical c3 immediately. But this has uh, a serious mistake. So see if you can figure out what black should play here. Okay, well the answer, and this is maybe the only really neat tactical shot that uh, Curtis missed in the game, is knight to e3. So counterattacking on the queen, and black has to, or white has to take because black is threatening not only the knight, and of course obviously the queen, but also forks grabbing the rook. So bishop takes e3, queen e4, hitting the rook as well as threatening knight e2, as well as maybe knight f3 in some cases. So king d2 is best, and then knight f3 check, king c1, rook d5, and black is clearly better. So he's not even down any material. White's uh, king is not really in immediate danger, but it's awkwardly placed given that the rook on a1 is, is now stuck there. So this, this is very much in black's favor. Instead, black played rook takes d5. And here again, white should take the knight on c4. And he's probably better. I mean, again, black's got chances, but it looks like um, white's probably better in this position. Instead, he played queen to d3. Maybe he saw the knight to e3 idea this time. But now, queen takes g4, and there's just too many attackers. So c takes d4, knight d4, queen c4 check, which is, th this just this is the losing move. Because after queen c4, king b8, white threatens, um, well, th the big thing is he's threatening the knight, but there's no way to really protect the knight that doesn't allow something else that's really horrible. So um, depending on where the knight goes, if it goes anywhere but d2, there's knight to f3 check, and queen takes c4. And the problem is that after knight to d2, knight f3 check anyway. And no matter what black, oh sorry, no matter what white does, um, as long as it's not knight takes f3, black will take the knight with check on the next move, and then take the queen the move after that. So the position is just losing here, and the game ends like this. All right, and uh, okay, still a couple more moves, but we can see that black is doing great on material. He's got a queen and two pawns for a rook and a piece, so up the equivalent of about three pawns, and white's king is still exposed, so it's uh, no surprise that the game ends quickly. So it's another pawn, and still another pawn, and now uh, white's losing the rook or getting mated, so uh, here he resigned. So fantastic game by Curtis. Did a great job completely outplayed his much higher rated opponent and again this is this is the model this is how you should uh, how you should go after a higher rated player so you know look for a sharp but but reasonably sound line you know don't play something that's just uh, terrible but you know something that gives you good chances to mix it up
or at least to get into the kind of position that you like. And, you know, accidents can happen. If the position's crazy enough, y you give yourself that, that extra shot. Now, again, you shouldn't do it in a position where you're just going to be lost if your opponent knows what to do. But, but this is a line that I isn't that bad. I mean, it's dangerous, but uh, I don't think it's... It's not clear that white can achieve a clear advantage against this, uh, this Lowenthal variation. A slight advantage, probably, but probably not a clear advantage. And again, so I would say from the, s the standpoint of the higher rated player, you know, the safe and sound thing to do, unless you're really sure of yourself in, in, in the particular variation, is, is to look for a way of maybe accepting a smaller kind of edge, but a stable edge. You know, if you're 400 points higher rated than your opponent, you should be able to win any normal position against them. So make it a normal position. Don't let it get out of hand. Okay, so look at one more game. And this is a game I wanted to look at last week. And, and this is just something absolutely comical. I mean, it's just, just crazy. Um, you know, you'll see. I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing game. So this is between Gallagher and Davies, or maybe it's pronounced Davis over there. And, um, you know, so two Grandmaster names, and the, the initial of the, the player with black is even N, like Nigel, but it's, it's not. So they're, they're both players whose uh, their BCF ratings on the conversion, they're basically pretty close to 2,000, both of them. Okay, so Gallagher is white, and he's the guy who submitted this, and uh, I would submit this too. And, and frankly, you know, I, I think even though I'm at least uh, on paper significantly higher rated than Gallagher, Looking at a game like this, I think I would be afraid to face him. So I, I would definitely uh, not look for provocative openings against this guy. Okay, so d4, f5, knight c3, knight f6. And already the adventures begin with the move g4. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, this is the kind of nonsense that when I was a kid I saw Kamran Shirazi play all the time, uh, the guy that I mentioned in the last game. So he's this... Um, uh, international master. I think he's living been living in France for a number of years. He was in the U.S. for quite a while, and he's from from Iran, if I remember correctly. Anyway, he played all kinds of coffee house openings like this, and uh, you know it's a lot of fun. Takes some a little bit of guts to play this over the board, though. All right. On the other hand, if I'm black in this position, um, you know I'm I'm realize okay I'm playing someone who's you know an absolute crazy attacker, and my inclination would be to play something more solid here. So I would probably play something like d5 in this position. And if g5, okay, I play knight to e4, I think I'm reasonably happy with that. And if he plays g takes f5, I recapture, and again, I, I, I don't think that I mind. So I want to play solid lot, but not solid in the sense of passive, but solid in the sense of fundamentally sound moves that keep the position under control. And, um, you know, typically that involves maintaining good central control developing my pieces, and, and so on. All right, so instead, Davis said, show me. He plays F takes G4. Okay. Gallagher plays E4, so why not? That's the whole, that's the basic idea. Okay, black plays D6, H3. Okay, so again, white is looking to have black help him develop into open lines. So here, black played C5, and I think this is a new move, but it's not a good new move. Um... Okay, I mean, it's just a sharp position. You can look for lots of things to try. Maybe you can play. I, thi I think e5 has been played here. Knight c6 has been played here. Um, you know, probably knight c6 is, is quite quite a logical move. All right, so, you know, this is, it's okay. I mean, uh, it's not... Nothing here is going to, let's say, refute white's opening to the point where it's just clearly resignable. Um, you know, and... Nothing's really that horrible for black either. I mean, just, you know, it's a matter of taste. But you want to, again, you want to play purposeful moves here, and you want to try to make sure that you get your, your fair share of the center and that you keep developing. So c5 is an attempt to kind of resolve the situation in the center. So he's hoping for something like d5, some move that keeps everything under control. Uh, now here white played h takes g4. I'll just mention that, you know, Black is, I guess, kind of bluffing a Peart's idea, but it's important to notice that d takes c5 is actually quite good here. And, and the point is that after queen a5, c, d, knight e4, this works in the Peart's, but it doesn't work here. White just plays queen to d5, and, and the game is, is over for black. I mean, black is now in big, big trouble. So, um, 
he has to play queen takes d5, I believe. Knight takes d5, and um, knight to c7 is, of course, quite awkward. In fact, there's nothing really that black can do that's very good about it, because knight a6, just bishop takes a6. So, uh, d takes c5 would have been fine, but okay, white plays hg, he doesn't care about anything. All right, now here, uh, bishop takes g4, I think, again, would be my preference, and then after f3, cd, queen d4, and then bishop to e6. So we're keeping the white bishop off of c4, we're ready to play knight to c6, we're developing our pieces, you know, play knight c6, and then either think about castling queenside, or play g6, bishop g7, and maybe just wait, you know, not, not castle kingside, but maybe wait and see what white does with his king before determining our, uh, the, the, uh, the, the final resting place <laughs> of our own king. All right, so I, I, I would have liked this better. Bishop takes g4, and, and only then maybe cd. Okay, so instead c takes d4, and okay, you would think obviously queen takes d4, knight c6, maybe bishop to b5, something like that, but no, Gallagher plays g5. So we just counterattack. dc. Gf6. Okay, now here black could maybe take on f6, or uh, even play c takes b2, and you might have something like this in that case. And here I think black is okay, but you know white still has his chances as well. But this bishop on b2 may be slightly misplaced, but I think what white will try is probably something like queen g3 with the idea of f4 trying to blast open this diagonal. So even here, I think white has pretty good chances. Uh, in the game, after g takes f6, he chose queen to a5. And this looks pretty pretty reasonable. Um, of course, the big threat of c takes b2, and you know maybe he's hoping to gain a tempo of white plays like b3. But Gallagher, you know, he's, he's this, this guy came out of the 19th century, I think, plays b4. So give away the, temp the pawn, but with tempo at least, so it's very important. Queen b4, f7 check, king takes f7. Okay, so now black is up three pawns, and, you know, he's probably okay, but, you know, what he needs to remember is that, uh, you know, he's got to develop some pieces. So white plays knight to f3. And here I think, okay, maybe black should play something like king to e8, and after knight g5, knight c6, bishop e3. Okay, you know, white's got chances here, I mean, Black's king is is quite bad, not in the sense he's going to get made straight away, but has a very difficult time finding any place to stay. I mean, if he stays in the center, he's going to have trouble. Uh, thanks to the b4 idea, casting queenside has its own difficulties as well with this this open file, and um, obviously the king side is a bit vulnerable as well. All right, but in the game, Black just didn't believe any of this and played queen takes e4. So, four pawns up. But now, you know, uh, all of a sudden, white is getting getting some rapid development in. So, threatening knight to g5 check. So, the king retreats. Bishop to d3. Queen c6. Okay. And, you know, here, white's pieces are almost all out. All right. Plays rook to h5. As you can see, now he's got four pieces in play. Uh, he's threatening bishop to b5. Position is getting rather exciting. And um, also, knight to g5 is on the agenda as well. So he had to get the rook out of the attack. So everything is happening with tempo now. And it's, it's uh, already getting a little bit tough to see what, what black should do. Now, if you flip your computers on, not that you should. You, you shouldn't, at least until you've done the best you can to analyze it for yourself. Uh, you flip the computers on, and, and they're happy with moves like a6 and bishop to g4. And both moves are quite logical. Okay, so a6 is you know, the most obvious move to stop bishop to b5. But all right, knight to g5, so we're, um, you know, obviously attacking the uh, the h pawn, but maybe clearing a path for the queen in some lines too. Something like bishop to e4 could happen, followed by queen to f3 or bishop to d5. So let's say e5, bishop e4, queen c4, rook h4, and uh, white is clearly better here. Maybe he's already winning. I mean, you can see that um, black is just in an incredibly vulnerable position. So threats bishop to g6 check. Um, again, you know, the queen maybe is ready to come out to f3 in some cases. And it's just getting really, really uh, dicey here. Okay, so a6 doesn't really 
solve the problems. Well, another possible move is bishop to g4. Okay, and the idea here is bishop to b5, bishop h5, let's say bishop c6, knight c6, and, um, you know, if we count up the, uh, the, the, the dead bodies here, white's got a queen, but black has a rook, a bishop, and four pawns. Not bad. However, the activity continues to be in, um, in white's favor. So, for example, queen to d5, bishop g4, knight to uh, g5, knight d8, queen e4, and white is already very well coordinated. Um, you know, I would say the position is roughly balanced and frankly a lot easier to play for white. So, you know, I, I'm not sure that white is objectively better at this point, but practically speaking, I think white is better here. Tough, tough for black to play. I mean, when you've got the swarm in exchange for a queen, it's only good if the swarm is coordinating, but if they're just, you know, strewn about here and there, and you can see black has basically no development, then the queen is a much more effective piece. But that said, this might have been still the way for black to go. So after rook h5, he played king d8, so another non-developing move. All right, white plays knight to g5 with yet another threat, knight to f7. And now uh, this is kind of a funny move for black. You could try queen to e8. And, you know, so the queen, and, the queen and king have switched places here, and meanwhile, every piece that black has left is on the first rank. So um, it's not surprising that white's initiative will gradually take over here. So, for example, queen f3, renewing the threat of knight to f7 check. Let's say g6, rook h4, again with the threat. King c7, knight f7, rook g8. Okay, and now queen d5, threatening, among other things, things like knight takes d6, and then queen g8. So rook to g7, and now we'll see that the attack isn't over either. So queen a5 check, let's say b6, takes, take the rook, and now we just pile up here. And now another nice tactic, rook takes d6, queen d6, rook d1. And here, too, white is clearly better. So uh, materially, it's about even. Maybe black is a uh, pawn ahead after the exchange. But again, white's queen is able to just run around and, and uh, cause damage more quickly than black's pieces will be able to coordinate and uh, create threats of their own. So back to the position after knight to g5. If queen to e8 doesn't work and we have to take care of the, uh, the fork threat, well, that leaves us with king to c7. Okay. White played knight to f7, and here perhaps um, black's last try to stay afloat is g6. So threatening the rook, and after rook h4, which threatens not only, le well, the, thre the threat was here, knight h8, but there's also the threat of rook c4. So queen e8, knight takes, bishop g7, and now maybe rook h7, bishop h8. And this position is unclear. Maybe white has something else. And this is certainly still dangerous for black, but <coughs> I think he's still I think he's still kicking here. I'm not positive, but I think he is. All right, but in the game, Davis played the obvious move, rook to g8. And now white could play bishop takes h7. That would be okay. But uh, the, the 19th century theme continues here. So see if you can figure out what white chose to play instead. So this, this game is just uh, insane. <laughs> he plays rook to c5. Well, okay, we, we don't want to give up the queen here. So d takes c5. Now bishop f4 check. All right, if king to d7, then bishop to f5, or bishop to b5. Um, yeah, bishop to b5, I'm sure, is, is best. Maybe bishop to g6. Anyway, also knight to e5 check. So we don't want to get, we don't want to step on this, on the d file here. So king to b6, this is what happened. Rook to b1 check, king a5, rook to b5 check. Okay, what now? Uh, king to a6, of course, just rook takes c5, wins the queen, and for uh, insufficient material. If queen takes b5, the material is okay. However, queen d3 check, and then queen takes h7, and white ends up um, doing well in material. Actually, if it was just right here, if we just stopped it right at this point, black has, in return for the queen, two rooks, a bishop, and four pawns. So uh, a ton of material. But 
with queen takes h7, and then queen takes g8, and then the bishop uh, also being in danger, um, white is doing fine on, on, on material. So black played king to a4. And now we have a position where we certainly expect the, uh, the game to uh, conclude with a, a mate. And, and you won't be disappointed. So queen to b1, threatening queen to b3 mate, bishop to e6. And now maybe knight to d8 is even better than what Gallagher played, but knight to e5 is, is fine. Okay, queen h1, bishop f1. Okay, so let's realize what the threat is here. White's idea is to play rook to a5 check, and then after king takes a5, to play queen to b5 mate. Okay, how do we stop this? Well, one try would be knight to c6. So this does two things. So first of all, it covers a5, and secondly, uh, if knight takes c6, then b takes c6, and the pawn is covering the b5 square. All right, however, rook to a5 check anyway is the winning move. So knight takes a5, queen b5, king a3, we take, knight to d3 check, queen a4 check, queen to d1, and it's mate. So takes a bunch of, <coughs> excuse me, takes a bunch of moves, but with so many pieces hovering around the uh, black king and so few defenders, it isn't at all surprising that something like this is going to be the result. Okay, so that's not what happened. Black didn't play knight to c6. Uh, another move that he didn't play but could have with the same idea as b6, but once again, rook a5, and he'll get driven to his death. All right, so queen to e4 check happened, bishop to e3, and now again if b6, now rook to a5 check doesn't work because um, white's not going to have queen to a4 in that one line that we looked at. But instead, he should play rook to b3. The idea is to play queen c1 and queen to a3 mate. So um, also, even more directly, there's bishop to b5 mate being threatened. So a6, and now queen c1, queen b4, rook takes b4, c takes b4. Materially speaking, as usual, black is doing fine. Two rooks and four pawns for the queen, that's plenty, but bishop to g2 is winning because uh, the only way for him to save the rook is to play rook a7, but that's only temporary. Bishop takes b6. The rook is gone anyway, and um, the king is still in, of course, big danger. So white's winning in this position as well. So in the game, um, black played knight to a6 and just missed the threat. And of course, we know what to do now. Rook a5. So that was that. So extraordinary game. I, I hope this wasn't um, some, you know, some fraudulent game that he made up one day. Uh, if he did, he, you know, deserves credit for that too. You know, it was a, a very uh, ingenious um, bit of invention. But you know, if this is an actual over-the-board game, it's really impressive. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I, I certainly did. It's uh, kind of a mind blower, and uh, I guess you know his, his future opponents should look out. So so keep the game. <laughs> keep the game well behaved when you play this guy. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I think we won't do another member game for a while. Um, so you know, for the next time, you know, so keep your games for the moment. We'll we'll have a, a new announcement I think to submit games in the future. And um, so I'll see you next time. We'll do it again. I think this is a lot of fun, and I hope it was instructive for uh, for you guys as well as entertaining. And as I said, next week back to. Um, Something let's say more more usual. Hopefully not uh, boringly usual, but but usual and and uh, good in its own way. So thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you next time.